A pale plant-like creature in West Virginia attacked a man with its thorny fingers. In the frontier days, cowboys would share strange stories of a cactus creature roaming through the desert, scratching up campers with its barbed tail. And a monstrous tree in Madagascar lures human victims with sweet liquid, then crushes them alive with hooked leaves. Today we're talking all about scary, mutated, and mysterious plants. In 1968, Jennings Frederick was out hunting in Fairmount, West Virginia when he heard a weird sound. It wasn't an animal, and it wasn't human either. It was this high-pitched, fast and jittery noise, almost like someone playing a tape at double speed. Curious, he tracked it through the woods until he came face to face with something he'd never forget, no matter how much he tried. It was some sort of creature. It had pale greenish skin, a skinny frame, arms like branches, and fingers tipped with thorns, and was making that awful, inhuman sound. All Jennings could do is stand there in complete shock and awe until suddenly he could hear the thing talking. Not out loud, but in his head. Don't be afraid. I want to talk. I come in peace. I need help, it said. And then, without warning, the creature rushed him, grabbing him in a tight, almost desperate hold, piercing his skin with its thorned fingers. Jennings tried to break free, but the thing just would not move. During the whole encounter, its eyes kept flashing in different colors, too, and Jennings just couldn't look away. It felt hypnotic. But a few seconds later, the creature finally let go and sprinted up a hill. Not long after, Jennings heard a deep, low humming, like an engine firing up, and the creature was gone. It was never seen again. Next up, we have the Cactus Cat. Part cactus, part cat, cactus cat. Stories about the cactus cat go way back to the old frontier days. Cowboys swore they'd seen this odd plant-like cat creature in the deserts of California, New Mexico, Nevada, and parts of Colorado. They said it looked like a bobcat, but with cactus-like spikes instead of fur, sharp bones sticking out of its front legs, and a tail that split like a tree branch. The thing didn't hunt prey or stalk travelers, instead it had a strange obsession with cacti. It would come out at night, slice open cactus plants with its claws, let the sap drain out. And then the next night, it'd come back and drink the fermented liquid, basically cactus moonshine. That's when the thing would appear intoxicated, it would stumble around and wail into the dark. People said its cry was eerie and sad and its bones it would make this dry, scratching noise when it moved. It wasn't usually aggressive toward people, but there were stories of folks waking up with scratches and welts like the creature had swatted them with its barbed tail. What you're looking at here is one of the most feared creatures in all of Japan, Korea, and possibly all of North America. This is the Flying Flesh Carrot because that's kind of what it looks like, somewhere between a carrot and a chunk of raw meat. It doesn't walk, it doesn't crawl, supposedly it floats, silently gliding through the air. Most sightings come from hikers or hunters, usually in remote areas, who catch a glimpse of it drifting by and then disappearing into the trees. One of the first reports popped up on a Japanese message board in 2019. A guy claimed that he saw this thing just hovering along, bright orange, kind of fleshy, not really flying in the usual sense, just sort of existing midair. And someone else replied saying his sister caught something similar in a photo taken in Korea, but he said it looked less like a carrot and more like a blob of meat. But just what in the hell is this fleshy carrot horror? No one knows. Back in 1874, a story came out that lit up newspapers around the world. It was written by a guy named Edmund Spencer, and featured a letter supposedly written by a German explorer named Carl Leach. According to this letter, Leitch was deep in Madagascar when he came across a tribe called the Makotos, who, according to him, were not exactly the welcoming type. They quietly led him through the jungle until they reached a strange-looking tree, and that's where things got very dark. Leitch described the thing like a giant pineapple with huge hooked leaves and a pool of liquid at its center. Then came the horror show. The Makotos forced one of their women to climb the tree. She drank from the liquid and immediately the tendrils snapped to life and wrapped around her, crushing her like a snake. She screamed, then choked, and then the tree started oozing bodily fluids down its trunk. Leitch claimed he stuck around and studied the tree for weeks, said he found smaller versions of it, said he even saw one eat a lemur. The Yativia was first written about in 1887 in Land and Sea by American journalist and author J.W. Buell. 
It's supposedly a real carnivorous tree found in South America, with relatives rumored to grow in Africa and along the Indian Ocean. Most descriptions say it has a short, thick trunk and long tendrils that lash out and grab anything that gets too close. Some versions even say it has an eye used to track its prey. Locals were terrified of it. They believed it was cursed, the result of some kind of dark magic or witchcraft. The way Buell described it, this thing didn't just eat bugs like a Venus flytrap, it was actually big enough to take down humans. The tendrils were covered in hooked barb, and instead of growing upward, they lay in a circle on the ground, like a trap. It sorta looked like a good place to rest, but if you got too close, the spines would spring up like snakes, coil around you, and crush you to death. In 2007, villagers in Padrama, South India claimed something insane was going on in the forest. A tree was eating their cows. Farmers had noticed cattle returning home without tails. Some of the cattle were just missing entirely. Then one afternoon, a cow grazing near the forest was suddenly yanked off the ground by what witnesses described as living branches. The animal screamed and thrashed as the herder ran back to the village in a panic, and a group of people returned with axes and machetes. By the time they got there, the tree still had the cow, but they managed to beat back the branches and rescue it. The tree, according to villagers, went limp after being struck. Locals call it Pilimara, which means tiger tree. And they've had stories about it for years. Forest officials did acknowledge that reports had been made about cattle injuries and missing animals and said their staff even came across a partially cut down tree in the same area, one that seemed to match the descriptions. A few years after the 2011 Fukushima nuclear disaster, some strange photos started making the rounds online. They showed flowers, specifically daisies, growing in these weird, unnatural shapes. The petals were fused together and the stems looked thick, stretched and twisted like someone had mashed a bunch of flowers into one. It's a condition called fasciation, where the plant's growth hormones go haywire and cause it to grow in weird ways. These mutated daisies were found roughly 100 miles from the Fukushima site, and it didn't take long for people to blame radiation. After all, this was one of the worst nuclear disasters in recent memory. Mossman is one of Florida's lesser known but creepiest cryptids. Described as a tall humanoid about six to seven and a half feet, its entire body is covered in what looks like moss, almost looks like a walking ape-like bush. The first reported sighting was in 1978. A couple was relaxing on the beach when they spotted what looked like a man in a raincoat lying by the rocks. They ignored it until it stood up, and that's when they realized that it wasn't a coat. What they thought was fabric was actually moss, growing straight out of the thing's skin. It also had bright red eyes, which locked onto them. The couple rightfully hopped to their feet and bolted. Later, the only thing left behind where the strange creature had been was a clump of Spanish moss. That kicked off a string of sightings over the next two years. People reported seeing its head rise from the ocean mist or spotted it drifting through the trees and parks. It was seen in places like Red Reef Park, Hillsboro Beach, and West Palm Beach. Closest call came in 1980 when an elderly couple saw something hidden in the bush during an evening stroll at Red Reef. Well, the woman leaned in, and the thing turned and locked eyes with her, and they were glowing red, staring right through her. The couple ran for it. There haven't been any major sightings since, Till this day, no one really knows what people were seeing. This one comes from deep in the Nicaraguan swamps, a plant known as the Vampire Vines, just as horrific as it sounds. The original story was published in Lucifer Magazine back in 1891, from a report by a naturalist named Leroy Dunstan. He was out collecting bugs and plants when his dog suddenly started crying out nearby. He ran over and found the animal tangled in what looked like thin, rope-like vines. The plant's branches drooped like a weeping willow, but there was this black, sticky substance oozing from the stems. It was kind of like sap but darker, almost like tar. He tried to cut the dog free, but as soon as he touched the vine, it turned on him. The tendrils seemed to reach out, trying to latch onto his skin, and wherever it touched, it burned. Blisters formed almost instantly. His dog managed to survive, but was covered in little bite marks. Dunstan later said that the locals called it Devil's Snare. 
and that others had actually been killed by it. He tried to take a piece of the vine home, but the thing died during the trip and it started rotting. It smelled so bad he had to throw it overboard. Chernobyl's radioactive fallout didn't just poison the ground, it changed the way things grow. Inside the exclusion zone, where humans mostly stay out, researchers have been quietly planting and studying crops to see how radiation still affects life. One of the biggest surprises is wheat. The seeds looked normal, but what happened after planting was anything but. Scientists found that wheat grown inside the zone was mutating at a rate up to six times higher than normal wheat. Some plants sprouted weirdly fast, others barely grew, some had odd shapes or stunted roots, others were completely sterile. These weren't caused by heavy doses of radiation like you'd get in an accident, this was from long-term low-level exposure in the soil, the air, and the water. So the wheat's DNA got scrambled, not enough to kill it outright, but just enough to confuse the signals that tell it how to grow. What's even creepier is that these mutations are still happening decades after the disaster. So even when things seem to look normal, nature is still having a very hard time recovering. I've been your host, James. I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.